Right, another um, nice finishing touch to a document is to have headings, headers and footers placed on the document. So you commonly see this in books and publications where you may have chapter titles etc placed on the header of a document. And uh, page numbers uh, are commonly placed on the footer, so we'll work on that now. I'm in the insert uh, tab here and I'm going to work on inserting headers and footers. So I'm going to just pop down that header menu there and choose a style. Um, I'm going to go with the three column style and click on that and you can see I have three slots available to slot some information in and the first slot I'm just going to pop in my name which I'll type in directly. In the middle slot I wish to type in the date but I don't have to type that in directly because on the insert toolbar uh, there is an insert date and time option so I can pop that in there by clicking on it and choose a format of date that I like. I like this one here. And uh, I can choose to have it updating automatically. Um, if I chose this not to update on automatically and I'd save this document today, when I opened it on a subsequent day, it would stay at this date. However, I would like the document to update um, to, uh, to automatically. So I'll just click OK there. And you see my date's just been popped in. Now the third item I wish to put in is the name of the file. I want that to be automatically picked up and this is under the quick parts section. And when I pop down that sub menu there, I want to pop in a field. Now in the list of fields here, if you scroll down, you can see that one of the fields that you can put in is the file name which it'll automatically pick up from the file itself. And I'll get it to appear in just standard formatting. You can have it all capitals or all lowercase if you wish. I'll just get it to pick up the formatting that I've typed in for the file name itself. You'll notice the file name here appears in the title bar, so this file name should be document layout. So I'll just click OK. And there you can see that there is my file name my date and my name appearing in the header. Okay, now we'll work on the footer by clicking on the page numbers option here. And at the bottom of the page in the footer, I'm going to apply page number. So I'm going to choose page number in this bottom center of the page here, which I'll click here. There you go. I'm going to highlight that and go back to my home tab and make it bold. Now any formatting or anything that I apply on my first footer here applies to every footer across the document and the same goes with the header. The header and footer is something unless you tweak the settings that is applied all the way across an entire document. Now you can see that I have a problem here. I'm locked into the editing of the header and footer and I wish to return to editing the main document itself. So to do that I just return to the header and footer tools here and just close off the header and footer. Now I've returned to my main document and I'm ready to work on some final, final touches. I'm going to go right to the end of the document and down here, I'm going to change my zoom back to 100% because it's more appropriate for what I'm working on here. I am going to place in some copyright information at the very end and to do that I need to find a symbol. So back to my insert tab and I wish to find a copyright symbol. So right in the right hand corner here symbols for mats are available and also symbols are items that you may not be able to find on your keyboard. That's what you can classify under this symbol element here. So if you're looking for a button on your keyboard and you can't find it, this is where you should go to try and find that symbol. For example, some people may find it difficult to find a euro sign I'm looking for the copyright sign here. Now, um, other symbols such as foreign language symbols here, E with an accent, etc., are available with a if you want to pop out the extra dialog box. There's loads and loads of symbols available to you if you keep scrolling through different language sets, etc. Just cancel that out now and find my copyright symbol. When you mouse over again, it gives you a screen tip telling you the symbol name. So I'll just pop it in there. As well as the symbol, I'm just going to hit the return key twice here. I'm going to 
put in a little picture that I've saved. So under the insert tab again under illustrations I'm going to click on the picture button. I'm going to navigate here to a picture that I've saved in my word processing folder inside in the demo files area there and there's a nice picture called save a tree and you can see it just tells us to save a tree and only print this document if necessary. Now um, I want this uh, picture to be a little less overstated so I'm going to change the size of that so I'm going to use a dialog box under the size area here and to pop it out. I'm going to bring it down to 60% of its height so I just type in 60 in the height box and when I click into the width box you can actually see that it changes to 60 automatically as well because you want to you don't want it to be changing size and width um, in different proportions because it could get skewed if you do that so I'll just close off there I think that's a better size for what I want to print so I like that now a lot of people get frustrated because it's difficult to move that picture around so just a little tip on that is to click don't forget when you're working on a picture you should be clicked on the picture itself because I can't change the picture now because I'm clicked away from the picture but however when I click back on the picture all the tools for working on a picture appear there in front of me uh, the one I'm going to work on here is text wrapping and I'll square up the picture there so it's quite easy to move around and I'll keep it right here they're just some of the document layout tools for looking at a document as a whole prior to finalizing and finishing your document.